Hi YouTube! So, I got a request from a viewer to do a video about how to access a BMP280 temperature and pressure sensor by using Python. And this will be the topic of today's video. So you can see here I have connected this BMP280 sensors board to a Raspberry Pi and I will use I2C to access the sensor. First of all, yeah, I will just go through the datasheet and I will um, show you all the important mm. sections, but this would require to jump back and forth a lot in the datasheet and it would yeah, destroy the clearance of my presentation. So I thought I could do a little slideshow about it because here I can structure everything a little bit better and I can put in screenshots of the datasheet. So here is my little presentation I have made for this purpose. And now let's go to the agenda. So every point you can see here, um, I will create a YouTube chapter. So if you're just interested in writing the script, for example, you can just skip the rest and just um, look at this section. But here is what we are going to do in the next 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. So first, let's talk about how to connect um, the sensor to a Raspberry Pi. Here you can see a picture of the sensor board I'm using. Here, this tiny chip here is the BMP280 sensor. The rest are just some additional um, condensators and resistors which are needed for this. And the pin, uh, the platin has six pins. Um, two pins are for power supply, the chip can handle 5 volts or 3.3 volt, but at, as the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi can only handle 3.3 volts, I will connect um, VCC to 3.3 volts. The next two pins are um, serial clock and serial data for the I2C interface, but this chip also supports the SPI interface. And in this case, there are two more additional pins. One is the chip select pin, and the last is the signal data output pin. In SBI mode, this fourth pin here will be serial data input. And But if you don't connect um, the chip select pin, the sensor knows, okay, you want to access it over I2C. And another great thing, if you're using such a board, you don't need any pull-ups which are required in I2C because they're already embedded on the board. And after you have connected um, this platine to your Raspberry, uh, we can now check if we can detect the board and the chip. So here I'm connected over SSH to my Raspberry Pi. And the first thing I have to do is I have to check whether or not I2C is enabled. For this, I will run sudo raspberry pi config. I will go to free interface options. I will select I2C. And here I have to make sure yes um, is selected here because this will load um, the necessary kernel modules into the kernel to access I2C interface. Okay, now after all modules are loaded. I can go to finish. And now I will try to um, detect my sensor. For doing so, I will need some applications which can be installed with sudo apt install i2c tools. But they are already installed on my system here. And I will use i2c detect to um, try to detect the chip and to find out the I2C address of my chip. As an option, I have to pass minus Y1, and this means I want to search the first I2C bus for devices. After executing this command, um, we can see um, this grid here, and every row stands for an I2C address, and you can see here only address 76 um, is present. So now we know our BMP280 has the address 76 hexadecimal assigned to it. And we will need this later when we are writing our script to read out the temperature. 
Okay, so much for connection. Now let's talk about how to actually get data out of the chip. I2C supports two operations. You can read and write from addresses. And in the data sheet of the BMP280, you can find this memory map, which assigns a specific address to a specific register of the chip. For example, behind the address um, D0, hexadecimal, you can find the chip ID, which is a read-only value which indicates um, the chip. And here you can see the whole memory map. I will quickly go about uh, interesting values for our use case. So I only want to read out the temperature. After you have watched this video, you should be able to um, figure out how to get the pressure value out of it on your own. So the important values for this are um, some calibration um, values here. Here in the config and control measurement registers, we have to write some values to it to set up the chip for our operation. And the next important things are here, these three um, registers, which contain the raw temperature value. And now we are going to look at these registers and their bit fields in more details. So first I want to look at the config register at address F5 hexadecimal. And I will go through all bit fields and I will tell you which value we have to assign to them. So bit zero is, um, has, has the function of an able free wire um, SBI interface. So if you want to use um, SBI free wire interface, you would have to set this bit to one. But as we're using I2C, we can leave this value to zero. The next bit field of the config register is bit four down to two. And here we can control the filters if we want to use any. But for our use case, we don't want to use any filters. So I would just set this value here to zero. The next bit field is bit 7 down to 5, and here we have the standby time. So in a special mode, in normal mode, um, the sensor does a measurement and then it will go to standby for the time we have specified in this bit field. And here in this table we can see the various possible values and the standby times which are assigned to these values. For example, if we set this to three zeros, a measurement will be done every 0 0.5 millisecond. But for our use case, it's okay if only every second uh, measurement is done and this will reduce power, um, power consumption as well. So I will set this to five, which means that standby time is one second. So nearly every second a measurement will be done. Okay, so much for the config register. Now let's look at the measurement control register, which is present at address F4. So the first two bits um, are the mode which we want to use. And these are the available power modes of the device. If we set it to zero, which is the reset value, it's in sleep mode, and in sleep mode, no measurement is done. If we set this bit field to one or two, um, excuse me for a second. So if we set this bit field to one or two, we are in forced mode, which means one measurement will be done, then it will go back to sleep mode. If we want to use continuous measurements, controlled by the standby time we have set up in the config register, we have to set it to free. And as, as we want to use continuous measurements, I will have to set this bit field to free here. Okay, the next register, oh, the next bit field is bit four down to two, and this bit field controls the oversampling of pressure data. But as we only want to read the temperature, we can leave this bit field with zeros. <clears throat> now there is an oversampling control for temperature data too, and here we will take a little more closer look to the settings. 
So here we can see um, uh, possible values for the bit field and their meaning. For example, if we would set it to one, we would get an oversampling multiplied with one. And this means the resolution of our, of our temperature will be 16 bit. And this will give us a resolution. So if you toggle the least significant bit, the difference in temperature will be 0 0.005 degrees, which is quite a good resolution. But if you want to use a higher resolution, you can set the oversampling values to 5, for example. This will give us the maximum um, resolution, which is 20 bit. And I will just go with um, the maximum resolution here. So I will write the value 5 into this bit field. OK, now we are done with the setting, with setting up the sensor for temperature. Now we have to care about how to get the temperature value out of the sensor. And here, the calibration data is of some importance. The calibration data is a word each, so we have three words. And here are the addresses. And these should be the default values. And let's briefly look at the data type. So the first um, calibration value is an unsigned short. And with an I2C read, we will get an unsigned short too. So here we don't have to do any type casting. But with um, these two calibration values, these are short and signed values. So we have to do a little bit of type casting. And here is the sample code for the typecasting. Here we will correct the calibration data value. So we will read them first and then we will typecast them. Okay, now we are already done. Now we can finally read the raw temperature. For this, we have to read these three 8-bit um, um, registers here from address FA up to address FC. And now we have the raw temperature. To get um, a human readable temperature, we need a sort of algorithm to calculate it. And luckily, the algorithm is, um, can be found on the data sheet. So you can find here um, this formula to um, calculate the resolution. And you can see here, we have a function here called BMP280 compensate T int 32. And as an argument, we're passing our raw temperature here. And as a return value, we'll get the temperature in the following format. So we will get, we will get a number back, a signed number. And the first two um, decimal points here are after, after comma where, um, values. So we, if we want to have the temperature as a float variable, we have to divide the, the, um, the temperature calculated here by 100 and we will have our floating temperature. Okay, so much for the theory. Now let's try to actually, to actually um, get the temperature with a Python script. For this purpose, I will quit the presentation and move this to my first screen. And let me, yeah, split it here. So let's go back to the start. So, and I will um, write a simple Python script, which I will call bmp280.py. So let me add a little comment here. OK, so now we know what the script is going to do. And the first thing I will do is I will store the address of the BMP280 sensor in a variable. So, and if I remember it correctly um, from the I2C detect, the address is um, 76 hexadecimal. 
And next step is we have to get access to the i score c bus. Okay, for the access, I will need to import um, the module as m bus, which will give us access to the i score c bus. And while I'm already um, on importing, I will also import time from time, import sleep, because I want to read the temperature in an infinite loop. So, and here I have to create an object of the class smbus.smbus, and as an argument I have to pass the number of SB, um, i square c bus my sensor is connected to, which is the first in my case here. Okay, the next thing I have to do is um, I have to set up um, the config register of the sensor. Okay, so here I will um, use um, the method um, write byte data. And if I would only use write byte, it would just write up the a raw byte, but if I use write by data, I can specify the address inside the i square c device to which I want to write first. Okay, as an argument, I have to pass the address of the i square c address of my um, sensor, then um, the address I want to write to, which is f5 in this case here, and then a value I want to write. So the first bit will remain zero. <clears throat> the second bit for two, the only value we have to assign is this sample time here. Okay, so um, let's, so I will use a five here and shift it by five. This will assign um, this one second sampling time here. Okay, great. And now, we have to do a second write. This time I want to write to the measurement control register, which is here. So bit one down to zero, I have to set to three for normal operation mode. And the controls oversampling of pressure data, I can set to zero, but um, the bit seven down to five, I have to set to five. So I can leave this here. And I will order it with three shifted by zero. Okay, so now our sensor is set up and we'll do a measurement every second. Next thing we have to do is we have to get our calibration data. For this purpose, I will create a variable here and I have to read a word. So I will use the method read word data. The first argument here is the i square c address, which is BMP address, or which is stored in the variable BMP address. And the second um, argument here is the address here, which is 88 hexadecimal. And I have to do this for um, the next two words just in the same way. Okay, now we have our calibration data. And now we have to correct them because you see um, these two um, are signed variables. This one is an unsigned variable. Okay, after doing this, we can now calculate or we can now read the raw temperature. So, for reading the raw temperature, okay, um, I will use the method um, read byte data, and yeah, it mostly just works the same. So, I have to pass the address of my i score c sensor and the address from the memory map from which I want to read. Okay. Okay, and now let's um, 
calculate our temperature. So D1 stores the most significant byte and so I will shift it by 16. Then D2 contains the middle byte, so I will only shift it by 8. And I don't have to shift um, D3 at all. And now, um, regarding of my resolution, I have to shift it um, to the left a little bit. So in my case, as I'm using the maximum resolution, I have to shift these four bytes away. So I have the correct value of my raw temperature. So the next thing we will do is we will um, calculate um, the temperature. So let me just copy um, all this slide here. And I will just pass in here the algorithm for calculating the temperature. And I will delete all the stuff I don't need here. Okay, and here yeah, let's align it here. Okay. So I don't need these variables here. And because this algorithm is a C example, um, I can get rid of all these type costing I'm doing here. So let me just delete some stuff here, all these type casting stuff. Okay. And I have to get rid of one um, copy error here. This minus is encoded with the wrong ASCII character, so I have to replace it here. Okay, and down here now we have um, the temperature is um, multiplied with 100, so to get um, the temperature as a floating value, I have to divide the temperature by 100. And now finally I can print out my temperature's value. Okay, and as I want to do this in a continuous loop, let me shift it here while true. And I will add a sleep one here because reading the temperature more than once in a second doesn't make any sense because my sensor is only um, only reads the temperature every second because we have set the standby time to one second. Good, so much for the Python program. Now let's try to run it. So we type Python free bmp pi. Uh, okay, I have made a mistake here in line 16. BMP, oh yeah. I mixed my variable names here. Let's try it again. Okay, so now we can get the temperature. You see it's quite hot in my room. I have another temperature here and it says about the same value. And if now I put my finger on the temperature sensor, you can see the temperature is increasing. So it seems um, reading the temperature out of the sensor just works fine. Okay, great. But what's about the pressure? I think after watching this video, you should be able to figure out how to get the pressure out of the sensor by your own. Um, and here I have passed a link, or here I in my presentation, I have a link to the data sheet of um, the BMP280 temperature sensor. So just take a look at it. After watching this video, you should be able to figure out how to get the temperature, uh, the pressure out of the sensor on your own. And of course, I will put a link to this slides um, in the description. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching and goodbye.